with uh, Rob Bellinger, a frequent uh, visitor to our set here to talk about some uh, cool Olympus equipment. And what are we looking at today? Well, today I brought in the DSX 510. This is our upright, high resolution digital microscope, uh, part of our series of digital microscopes. Um, we have the 110 model, which is the little lower mag, uh, capable of angle imaging on tilts, meant for larger parts and uh, working underneath of the microscope. The 500 is, uh, the 510 is our upright version, and we have a 510i, which is our inverted uh, version of this system as well. And inverted means what? Looking at the sample from uh, underneath, oh, okay. where you put like flat samples onto the stage, Got so it. samples that are cross-sectioned and polished and stuff okay. like that. So some of the new uh, features I want to cover on the 510i are mostly software driven. Um, I'm sorry, the 510 upright. So we're going to go through a few of those. Um, one of the starting points we have is uh, our best image function. Uh, if you go into the screen here, you look at our best image function before. This was always um, capable of showing the different imaging techniques in the system. So users could walk up to the system, hit a button, and it will show several different images of their sample at different lighting effects, different imaging types like bright field or dark field or DIC or our unique mix function where we're mixing bright field and dark field. And this would, this so would come up and kind of show a sample show of, this, okay. Yeah, right. the sample images and they could select which one they prefer to use. What's, what's changed now in the new software is the ability to save all of these tiled images. So you can customize these array of images to capture all the different pictures of your sample at different image techniques. So say you have a sample area that you want to always capture dark field a bright field, an HDR image, and a DIC image. Okay. Rather than having to go out each time and capture those individually, you could have it tile these up and just hit the save button on the screen. And it'll save all those images into a format. File so format so then when you come back to measure, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take each of those different lighting conditions into effect. In, into effect. So, so you're saying in the past you would have to select, let's say, bright field, go out and capture an capture image, it. come back, say, dark field, go out, and, and now it'll just, you line up the type you want, and it'll you just You line up the types out. you want, okay. it'll capture them all automatically for okay. you, and you save them out. So you can have one area of your sample, have multiple different imaging techniques on it, and save those in one shot. Okay. So again, you can still select the imaging technique you want and hit apply, and it'll go out to the microscope and apply that imaging technique. So this is just simplified for user interaction. They don't have to go in and select this mix mode, select the brightness, select the exposure rate. They just look at the best image, and it puts it right on the screen for them. Okay. One of the other new features is you know, imaging out of the field of view, being able to get an area on your sample quickly to be able to either use that as the picture you want to take or use that as a guide function to know where you're at at higher mags on your image, what we call map function. If we go into our stitching here on the screen, we can choose live panorama now. And in the past, with our 2D simple image, you were able to take and touch the screen and move around with your finger. You can still do that technique and just stitch together whatever area you want. But now we can use an auto function. And the auto function allows you to select a panorama area. So we can select from 3x3 three three up to 21x21. 21 21. And when you select this and start your acquisition, the software automatically moves in what they nicknamed the tornado function. It moves oh, okay. around in a cylindrical, you know, left, so I can right, see, Yeah, I can bottom. see it on the screen here. It's just kind of circling around. Now, you say in, in, in the past, the way you did this is this wasn't automatic. You would just manually would just drag manually. that box with your finger and, and kind of select manually the area that we're stitching. Exactly. Or you would uh, click on an arrow to drive to that point. Okay. Now the software will just drive around and capture a large area for you based on the array you picked and either let you use this image or if we go back to live now, this image will be put in our map screen up here in the top right, if you look at the screen here. Okay. So now you can use this large area to move to specific points on your sample. Oh, I see. So the so, top right is your kind of your navigator, navigator. and you, you wherever you drag the box on your navigator, that's what gets shown up on the live view. Exactly. Okay. So if we go back to live and we want to center onto a point, we can double click like that on the screen and we can change our magnification up. If I select a higher magnification lens, you can now see in the map screen a very small area, ah, okay. a region of interest. So what's great about the map screen is you always know roughly where you're at on your sample. And, and, you and your field of view. Within yeah. your field of view. Okay. And you, if you need to move to another point quickly, you can just drag the box and move to another point quickly. Okay. One of the other new features we have, if you see on the screen here, the 3D or EFI settings. 
We were able to do fast and fine scans in the past to acquire your, all of your stitched images in Z to create an all-in-focused or oh, three-dimensional okay. right. image. Now we have a new mode called UltraFast. They've taken the same algorithm that they use for fine mode capture, but they capture in UltraFast. This means there's no pause in the scan. It just scans from top to bottom in a continuous mode, much, much faster, but still rendering all of the high-quality three-dimensional image data. And height information. Right, so you get you get it uh, you you get it in folk. Basically, in, it, it increases your your depth of field. I mean, from ma infinite depth of field. Basically, I mean, from yeah, top as to bottom, much, right? as okay. much as the travel of the system has, okay. pretty much, and the working distance of your lens. But what you want to do on an image like this, where you see out of focus information and in focus information, you want to gather it all together. Maybe you even want to render the three D image, and you want to measure the height of this or the volume of this. So you got to capture that information. Being able to use ultra fast mode when we hit acquisition now on the screen. It's going to quickly scan through this. There's no stops and pauses to take okay. the pictures. It's just continuously acquiring. So it's m maybe three to four times faster than it was before, even in the fast mode. Okay. And when it's done, it's going to capture an all-in-focused image for us. So we see oh, from wow, okay. bottom to top, all-in-focus. And we can even hit the 3D button here and look at the screen to see a three-dimensional image of this surface. Once we have the three-dimensional data, all the height data is there. You can do step measurements, width measurements, volume measurements, and all that stuff on this image now that it's rendered. You can save the 3D pictures out. Um, another major improvement once we switch into measurements is we now guarantee on the DSX 500 and um, sorry DSX 510 and 510i, we guarantee not only X, Y measurements now, the calibration for that, but also Z height. And when you say guarantee, so, what, what, do you, what do you mean? So when you're taking measurements in Z, you want to know if it's within 5, 10 microns. If you're measuring something, you need it to be accurate. We guarantee it down to at least a micron of Z height. Okay. So if you're doing surface roughness measurements, you want to know that your measurement values are going to be so accurate. Right. So we guarantee to a standard that the service engineer would put on and when it's created to step height measure, and it's a 100 micron step, it has to be within at least a micron using our 50x objective. Okay. So let me, uh, now we're talking about measurements, let me move into the measurement mode here. And I've got a pre-captured roughness image. One of the new features in measurement is uh, line and surface roughness. Before, since we weren't calibrating and guaranteeing Z height, we didn't do line or surface roughness. Now that we are, we can accurately and repeatably measure the surface detailed roughness of metallurgical samples, surfaces of plastics, materials, casted materials, things like that that they need to know is of a certain roughness value. Right. So if you look at our screen here again, we have a 2D image of some metal with some, you know, surface defects and roughness, we can apply our cutoffs and get our roughness average measurements and all the peaks and valley and information across the line. We also have surface roughness. And surface roughness lets you select a region of interest that you move around on to a certain area of your image. Now this could be a single snapshot or it could be our stitched together image. Okay. You have a big large area and select a, an area on the surface here to capture roughness data. We just hit calculate, and it's going to calculate all the surface average information. The screen here changed to this color overlay. This is the height data. And all you right. can see in our surface area, our region of interest, it captured that roughness data. All of this can be exported out into a data sheet. Data sheets can be sent out to Excel, or you can just go right to our report. And what's the, what's the importance of, of the, the, the line roughness and the surface roughness measurements? It's, it's mostly when material has to be of a certain texture okay. or when they're trying to polish it to a certain smoothness. It could be surfaces that bearings run over and those surfaces have to have a certain amount of roughness to be able to hold the, the uh, lubrication. Right. And it could be just materials like plastics on the back of your phones and stuff. They want to have a certain texture and it has to meet a certain roughness value. If it's too rough, it's going to have too much texture. If it's too smooth, it can be slippery. Right. So they measured this for quality purposes on all kinds of different materials. Metals, plastics, casting materials, carbon fiber materials. Okay. So with this system being able to quickly grab an image using your best function, it grabs all the height data and just scribe a line right across. It's non-contact, non-destructive, um, and 
real quick for image 3D capture. And then as you show, it, it uh, exports uh, to a report file. Yeah, everything goes out to report. This can be saved out as a Word type document or a PDF document. Okay. Cool. I'll step back. Okay. Uh, Ra and, and, and I think you said um, uh, what, in what is industries mostly? So the 510, uh, the upright uh, digital scope will range from you know, materials, circuits, semiconductors, stuff that needs higher magnification. The 110, the little lower mag, will be more of your bulkier samples, metals, medical device, uh, component assembly that kind of stuff. So it's a broad range even into materials and stuff. And the, the magnification of the 510 was what? The 510 can go down and you have as low of a 5x lens and okay. it's a digital zoom, uh, digital system with an optical zoom built in so we can go well over 7000x with our 50 times magnification lens. Okay. Well, Rob Bellinger uh, of right. Olympus uh, and Thanks the again, DSX 510. DSX 510.